Let's start with the first one. Uh, we will call. So um, we are going to first talk about the speaker's identity and why call. We think that um, the speakers are mostly teenagers, like teachers, like professors said, that it's not necessarily the black teenagers. They can also be us. They, it's adaptable for all of us. And the teenager is mostly isolated with other generations, like the parents or the teachers. So they have their own groups, and they are uh, fighting for their identity too. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a big like kept them to themselves more than mm -hmm. sharing with others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so uh, also they assert their identity mostly through uh, actions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And also we think that being cool is to do things that are not totally acceptable for all people like tattooing or smoking or clubbing. It mean it sometimes mean cool for us but it's not cool for others. That's what being cool. And <laughs> it's being unique, being different. Yes. Uh-huh. And <laughs> um in the poem um the sound of it and the rhymes we think it creates the it is like a children chanting rather than a serious poem. It shows the act of those teenagers is not really, they don't know how serious it might go. Yeah, but, and they use this way of saying the, the rhyme, the thin, thin, the short sounds. Yes. And the golden shavos, the golden, we think that golden is the teenagers' shining way of living, but inside their heart it's mostly empty and it's shallow and the sh shovel we have two ways of explaining one is death because we use it in the funeral and burial also mm -hmm. another way is um it th symbolize you use shovel to dig a hole and the tanger will keep falling and sinking and dropping without any mm -hmm. i don't know struggle um the struggle won't make any difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quite so hard. So sh shovel can be used as a weapon to hit people, but also to dig a hole for themselves. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to read the poem. Okay. Yeah, that's what I asked them to do. I think reading the poem is fun. <laughs> we real cool. We left school. We look late. We strike straight. We sin sin. We thin gin. We just June, we die soon. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, uh, I, I think you, you, you read it a, a bit similar to the way Daphne read it. Okay, um, just pay attention. You know, when you go online, uh, pay attention to the way uh, Gwendolyn Brooks read it. You know, she, uh, she like, you don't have to agree with her, but consider it as a way of reading. Uh, she cons uh, would prefer to have the we, uh, in a kind of weep, uh, no, sorry, weak and crisp sound. 就是很小声又可是很清脆。好, like, we, uh, we real cool, we left school, we look late, you know, a bit like this. We, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the lifting sound, but then small, crisp, you know, and uh, very short, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess uh, the group did a uh, very good interpretation. Um, what is ironic here is uh, that being cool, uh, on the one hand, means uh, being different, being uh, unique, uh, especially for uh, young uh, youngsters. But then on the other hand, uh, sometimes uh, the, the coolness is actually something trendy. Like um, maybe at one point it's cool to be taiko, and then you... you uh, you dress yourself in the colors and uh, sandals, uh, typical of taika, etc. Uh, and at one another point, it's cool to be uh, look Japanese, etc. So then, um, you know, the uniqueness is actually not real uniqueness. It becomes a uniform, okay. And the same thing with uh, the poor players here, okay. Uh, they actually conform. 
uh, to the same kind of uh, violence and meaningless actions, etc. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I think uh, uh, you definitely can make a lot of associations. Just recently, uh, they talk about bullying at school, and I thought that you know this could be another related issue. You know, sometimes you you feel very amazed how people, a group of people, can bully one person. You know what each of them are think is thinking. You know to uh, treat another person like an animal, etc. Yeah, I guess uh, that's also the pressure of the peers or the uh, the whole group. You know, kind of uh, conformity pressure of com conformity. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's get uh, move on to the next point. Uh, the group who, who, uh, which keeps talking and talking and talking. So now is your time to talk. So you also raise your hand. You know that you are the the group that keeps talking, right? Okay. So uh, which of you want to uh, help uh, analyze the point for us? Okay. Uh, and I think this point uh, is uh, use the conversation. Um, like the other whisper to us and said, "I'm nobody, and are you too?" And uh, it appears that he <laughs> wants to be a nobody because uh, maybe he thinks sometimes uh, somebody uh, a bit of selfish. I don't. And um, if they think you are nobody, and now they're high class, and they will. They will just uh, banish you and look down on you and just keep you away. And yes. <laughs> so that's uh, the the thing about uh, the definition of nobody. Uh, that nobody is not important. Nobody is to be excluded uh, from no. the whole group. The nobody in the uh, we talk about somebody uh, first. Somebody in this point, just uh, just like the person who in our society has the right to or privilege to speak, and they always speak, but just like frog, it's powerless, nothing, and monotonous. Monotonous, huh? yeah. Monotonous. Uh, can you Im imitate the sound of the frog? Quack <laughs> quack. <laughs> but you know that uh, in English. The way they uh, imitate it is uh, watch out. Watch out. Well, that's one way of teaching the kids how what watch out means. Watch out. Watch out. Mm. Watch, out. watch out. Yeah. Okay. And nobody just like uh, people, just the like just like people who like us. And as the as the little uh, as the tiny creature in the box, we don't have <laughs> we don't have we don't have much right to speak loud. Wait. Uh, so you think that all of you or all of us are nobody? No, but some some part of us. <coughs> Everybody could be somebody or nobody. Wait, wait, wait! wait explain more. Uh, <laughs> all right then. Because. <coughs> uh, Somewhere where nobody, because, for example, in in this English department, we're all nobody. But in this little uh -huh. class, for example, when I'm speaking, then I'm somebody. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, this is a good point. Uh, I mean, when you are a lar in a large class, when uh, it's hard for teachers uh, to recognize and no remember all of your names, you know, uh, you could be nobodies. But then, at the moment you speak up, you are a uh, somebody. So, but then, uh, does this somebody uh, look like a frog? Is this somebody like a frog? Well, for example, I'm kind of frogging now. <laughs> <laughs> but then, uh, kind of like but this is a. <laughs> if you if you think that you are a frog, this is a double edge comment because uh, you are criticizing the whole class, right? So is uh, is speaking up in class uh, like a a frog? Well, it depends on what I say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For example, uh, I'm saying something about uh, about the poetry that related to this assignment. So 
So therefore, I'm somebody. But if I'm just saying that, uh, if I'm just saying something that is not related to this topic, then I'm, <laughs> I'm a frog. <laughs> uh, wait. Uh, but yes. Uh, in uh, in this poem, in the context of this poem, I'm not. We're not talking about like general definitions. Uh, in the context of this poem, somebody is compared to a frog. So um, I, I think uh, the group is great to bring up some other definitions of somebody and nobody by saying that you know each of us can be both a somebody and a nobody. But um, to support your point, you have to explain, explain clearly how you define this somebody and nobody. And how it is different from the way uh, Emily Dickinson or the speaker defines it here. Okay. So, uh, any other explanation? Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My my question is: um, Do I want to be a somebody or nobody? And actually, surely everybody want to be a somebody. Sometimes, and uh, but what I think is, I want to be a somebody and nobody. <laughs> For what I, uh, what I saying is, uh, you can like study hard, you can do your best, and then you can be a somebody from from some part of your life. But you don't you don't always be a uh, somebody, this is tired. This, this is a tough job. And sometimes you can be a nobody. That you can do yourself. You can talk to your best friend. Just be a nobody. Just relax. Because I think be a somebody is not an easy job. It's just you have to talk a lot. You have to uh, do a lot. You have to. Um, Show sometimes show off, you know, or take a lot of responsibilities. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So for what I think is, I want to do somebody, and a nobody. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um. So I think uh, the group uh, now gave a better definition of what nobody and somebody means. You know, being somebody means uh, being a public figure, and with a public figure, um, sometimes uh, there is um. Fame, reputation, visibility, and everybody uh, importance, sense of importance. But then uh, there also comes uh, like sense of responsibilities uh, and also uh, lack of privacy. Uh, so that's why I think uh, most of us want to be both a somebody and nobody, in the sense that uh, we 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 need our privacy, uh, and we want to be nobody at a time when we can relax, etc. Okay. Uh, but I think here um, Emily Dickinson makes a sharp contrast between nobody and somebody because uh, there is this need in her society. There is this keen awareness uh, in the 19th century that she is only a nobody. And she's literally not recognized as a poet. And that's why she's a nobody. And uh, in order to establish her sense of identity, you know, she compares herself to the kind of somebody she does not envy. Okay, so this sharp contrast uh, is made to not really criticize somebody, but really to emphasize her own identity, to uh, establish her identity, and to also seek companion with the you. Okay, so this I and you become friends, you know, uh, different from the somebody who are important. Yeah, so I think. Uh, uh, the the main point is not really in uh, criticizing the somebody. And here, how dreary to be somebody. You know, I think it, uh, you can read it in different ways. You can read the dashes as emphasis, uh, so that it's read very slowly. How dreary to be somebody, etc. But you can also re read the dashes as hesitation. You know, she has to find reasons to. Uh, to make somebody not enviable. So she makes pauses, she hesitates what to say about somebody. And then she think of a good comparison, like a frog, and then the, the, uh, the description uh, flows. 
after she comes up with an answer, you know, that she's not a frog and that somebody is a frog. You know, so this is where uh, the pace picks up and it becomes more, more uh, uh, smooth and fast in the reading.